Sabia here from Can Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, December 27th. Believe it or not, I've restarted this intro a hundred times and I just can't get it right. It's been two weeks since my last video. I hope you had a great Christmas if you celebrated it. We had a wonderful Christmas. It goes by incredibly too fast to suit me. Uh, we spent Christmas Eve with my husband's family and Christmas Day with mine. And so lots of great memories were made. This video is a little bit different than my normal videos. Usually I have like a plan of attack and this video, there's no notes because yesterday I was busy purging my closet and I didn't take like 10 minutes to sit down and kind of go over everything that I wanted to talk about. So we're just winging this whole thing. Husband has gone grocery shopping. I know he's going to be back at any minute. Kids are home. They're in their bedroom. They're watching YouTube or whatever it is that they watch to keep them company while I stumble over my video. So um, before I go any further, there are some little people that I do want to give a shout out to. And those are my niece and nephews. So um, for those of you who might be new to me, I have um, five nieces and nephews. I have one niece and five nephews on my side of the family. Uh, my niece and nephew, Evan and Zoe, live down in Las Vegas, and they have been big fans of my videos since the beginning. Uh, they tune in to every single one, and it's a way for, it's a way for them to, to see me because I am their favorite. And if you ask them, they'll tell you I'm their favorite, and they love me more. And anyway, they watched every, they don't watch all the way through, but they do watch like 10 minutes and it's just kind of a way for them to see me and see what I'm up to and basically just to hear my voice and see my face. And then I recently found out that my nephews that live here, they live about four minutes from me, um, they watched my last video. And so that is Elijah, Liam, and little Ty. Um, and the only way that I... How I found out that they watched my video was that my nephew, I was babysitting them Saturday night and they came in and they told me that they watched my TV show and they really liked it and I did a great job. So I, I don't know if they'll tune into this video, but if any of them are watching this video, if Evan and Zoe are watching this video, hi, Auntie Liv loves you and misses you. And I hope to see Evan and Zoe soon and Elijah, Liam and Ty, I will see either today or I know they're going to come over here for New Year's Eve. So anyway, so thank you for watching. I appreciate it so much. Anyway, moving along. Let's see if we can get this video going and I don't have to delete it for various reasons. Um, so this video today, I'm not going to show any quilting or any quilt or anything like that. This one's going to be strictly cross stitch. It's going to be about what I worked on the last two weeks, the two finishes I had over the past two weeks. Um, I did get some Christmas presents that are cross-stitching related, and then I'm going to go through the mocking basket of whips, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. So let's start off with Christmas presents. So this present was not mine, um, and it was actually for my husband. It's this stocking here, and the story of the stocking is that when my husband and I first got married, we got married in November. So it was about a month before Christmas. And one, or my, I remember my husband telling me that now that we're married, we need to start our own traditions. And so a tradition that I had had growing up was we had stockings, even my parents had stockings. And so, you know, I told him about that. And so we went down to Rite Aid a couple of days before Christmas and we purchased, I mean, there was hardly any stockings. And so we had purchased, we had purchased two stockings. And my husband got just this plain white one, and then I kind of got like a cuter stocking. And the plan had been that between the first Christmas and the second Christmas, I would get the stocking that I was supposed to get my own stocking back. And then we, I would have my stocking that I'd had my whole entire life, and then he would get the new cuter one that I, we had just purchased because he didn't have a stocking. Well, that did not happen. I've never gotten my stocking that I grew up with. My brothers never got their stockings. We had Christmas ornaments we were supposed to get. We never got them. I have no idea what happened to them. I can only imagine the worst. It breaks my heart when I think about it because my grandma had made those stockings for us. And without getting into it, it's a, it's a very bitter pill that I did not get my stocking or my ornaments. So 
for years and years and years afterwards, I told my husband, I said, well, I will make you a stocking. And so of course, then I started doing quilting and I was gonna make him a quilted stocking and that didn't happen. And then I started cross stitching and I kind of toyed with it a little bit and I thought, nah, that's, I don't know that he would like that. I, I don't know. And you know, I would kind of look every once in a while but I never really saw anything I liked. And then I was, um, I watch um, Amy Loves Totes I watch her floss tube videos and she had started a Stony Creek stocking that was a lighthouse and it had like poinsettias and I thought well that's that's really pretty I like that and so when she finished the stocking I decided I, there wasn't anything going on so I decided to go on the Stony Creek website and kind of look around and I found this stocking for my husband so this is the Victorian Victorian Father Christmas and I went ahead and purchased it and then I um, I got a 32 count Lugana, just a plain white. And then I just picked up the specialty flosses and the male hill beads. And there's some sparkling rainbow blending filament thread. And I figure I'll just get the DMC later. Um, I'll just go into Joann's or, or Michael's and pick up the required DMC, see what I have in my stash and that kind of thing. So hopefully next Christmas, my husband will finally get his stocking. And so that's what I gave him. One of his Christmas presents was his stocking. And I think he's pretty excited about it. I mean, he seemed genuinely excited that he was finally going to get an a awesome stocking. And then my husband, he purchased Marabilia's Baker's Wife. And I just went ahead and left everything together. Um, I don't want anything to get lost. And so this is the bag it came in. Um, and so he bought me the pattern and he bought me all of the threads, the specialty threads, the Mill Hill beads. And he told me that I could just pick out the fabric that I want to stitch her on because I definitely want to put her on something that is um, hand dyed. I think she would just look amazing. And so um, he told me to go ahead, pick out what I want, and then that would just be part of my Christmas present as well. So I'm so excited. I absolutely love, 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 love her so much. And I'm very excited to start her at some point in the coming new year. And then something else that I purchased, its it literally will take me the rest of my life. And I'm fully prepared that for the rest of my life, I will be stitching on this one. Um, but when I saw it, it really, it really spoke to me. Um, and probably a, a little bit about me when I was, when I was younger, I had a, I had a, not necessarily like a reading problem, but I just, I didn't like to read. I didn't like anything about anything to do with reading. And so I was always, you know, like when I started my fifth grade year, I barely read at a fourth grade level. And I even remember at one point having a tutor and I just did not, I just didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like it. It was, it was a pain in the butt. Honestly, I, I hated it. And then my grandma, she gave me this book. It was, um, it was the first book out of the Mandy series and she gave it to me. She's like, well, read this. And if you like it, I will get you the next one. Well, it took me a year to read an 89 page book, but I finished it and then true to True to her word, she bought me the second one, and I read that a little bit faster, and then before I knew it, or before she knew it, I was like, every couple of days, I was like, I finished, and so she would have to go down to the Christian bookstore, and she'd buy me the next book in the series, and then she also bought me Tales from Grandma's Attic, and I devoured all of those, and then before long, I had caught up with all of them. And so then one of my really good friends in uh, middle school, she's like, well, do you want to go to the library with me? And it was on my way home, so I walked with her. And then we went into the library and we went upstairs to the romance novels. <laughs> and she's like, here, read one of these. And so I ended up reading a romance novel and that I just devoured all of the books in the library in the romance section. And a lot of the books that I liked were sort, not necessarily fairy tale, but they definitely were like set during like the middle ages. So a lot of knights and a lot of like fantasy. And those were really the books that I devoured. And even as an adult, I, you know, I, I love Lord of the Rings and I've watched, I mean, if it comes out and it's men on horseback wielding swords, 
I'm there. Huge Game of Thrones, all of the things. Outlander, all of that. So those just check all the boxes for me. So when I saw that Amy Stewart had released, and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna take it out of the packages because I mean, it literally is a book. When I saw that Amy Stewart had released a fairy tale bookcase, is that what it's called? It's a supersized Once Upon a Fairy Tale. It just definitely checked all the boxes for me. Now, I realize that it will take the rest of my life to stitch, and I'm okay with that. I know somebody did the calculations from it and said it would take eight years if you did so many stitches a day. So, I mean, it will take me the rest of my life, and I'm okay with that. I really love it. Um, I got some birthday money, and so I was able to purchase this on Black Friday, and so it was like half price, and I went ahead and had them send it to me printed, and I'm so excited. I'm gonna, my dad gave me a Joann's gift card, and so I'm gonna go to Joann's, and I'm gonna get all the threads. I believe there are 90 colors, and I'm not gonna take this out, but I also purchased the 25-gallon Lugana, and it's it's a yard piece this this doesn't finish as a like as a full yard I believe that when it's fully finished it's basically 40 by 29 still huge but I know that I've been following a lot of people on in the Facebook group and a lot of them have made very good progress so it doesn't, I don't feel like it has a lot of confetti, like Simply Meant to Be does. There's definitely like large chunks of color. And so I, I'm excited. I'm, I, I've really been wanting to do a big, you know, like heaven and earth ever since um, I met Christy with a K and a Y on Instagram. And I think it's also here on Flosstube. Um, ever since I saw her working on her heaven and earth and she kind of gave me all the tips and what to do and what not to do. And so I've definitely, it's been on my mind to pick a heaven and an earth and just go for it. So when I see that Joann's is having a sale on their DMC, I will take the gift card I got for my birthday and I will purchase all 90 colors, but I am so excited. And I'll try to put at the end of the video, I will put a better picture of what this looks like um, because the picture is really tiny and you can't see all the details. I mean, it's got it's got knights, it's got dragons, it's got winding staircases, it's got witches doing their witchy thing, and it's just, it's awesome. And I'm, I'm really excited to start, and I can't wait. And and if this one hadn't come out when it did, I was actually going to get the stitching bookcase, because I, I did like that one as well, and it, it, it took stitching like through the ages, and it went seasonally, so it was really, it was really pretty. And I still might get that one at a later date, but... Yeah, I'm excited to start this one. I know it's going to take the rest of my life. I didn't even show my husband when it came in the mail because I knew what he would say. And so he has no idea that I even bought it. And of course, he's going to watch my video and he'll see it. And he'll, he'll definitely comment on it. But I'm planning on doing it one over one. Um, I just haven't decided if I want to do a full cross or a tent stitch and I have a little time to decide that before I start it because I don't even have the threads or anything like that so but I am I'm excited I, re I really like it. it it really speaks to me and so <clears throat> hopefully I'll be able to show you guys progress as the year goes on I know a lot of people don't like heaven and earth and I definitely know that the subject matter being that it's sort of fairy tales um, a lot of people, it's not their cup of tea. So, but for me, I love it. And to go back to the, um, the story about the reading. So <clears throat> I, I could, so I went from it taking a whole year to reading a book with 89 pages to, I could sit down and read a 300 page book in an afternoon. And so I just literally devoured every romance novel that the Woodburn Public Library stocked and I went from barely reading at a fourth grade level at the beginning of the fifth grade year, that by the time I got to the sixth grade, I read at a college level. And so that was very amazing. So um, let's talk about my progress and then I will show you my finishes and then we will transition into my whips. And I'm gonna try to keep this video in all one chunk instead of breaking it up um, because I'm curious to see how fast it will upload as all one video. So, um, I am just down. So, 
I usually have three in my rotation. I'll have my weekend, which is like a long-term whip, and then I during the week I will rotate between two whips. And I went and I, when I finished the Christmas ornament I was working on last week, I decided to leave my slot open because on January 1st, I'm gonna be starting Anniversaries of the Heart, and I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to leave that spot open. I didn't want to start anything new and then have like this extra whip that I had started that now has to go into the mocking basket. My goal this year is to get some of those out of there and not put any more in. Um, and so I decided just to rotate between the two that I was currently working on in the hope that one of them I will finish and then I'll have two open slots to start in the new year. So I have been working on the Prairie Schooler. Thanksgiving comes again. And if you've been following me for a while now, I've been working on that. I think I started, well, I started it at Fall Fling, the beginning of November. And I stitched the top banner and the pumpkin at Fall Fling. And so I have that great memory attached to this. So over the past two weeks, I finished, um, I finished the lawn, the turkey, the barn, the geese, the corn, and I've started working on the final border. There's a tree, a little bit of a tree that goes here, and there's some leaves that will go here, and then it will be all finished. Um, I'm stitching this on a piece of, let's see how good my memory is, a 30 count. I think it's 30 count. I think it started off as 28 count. And then I tea coffee dyed it, which shrunk it down to a 30 count on linen that's been tea coffee dyed with all DMC threads. I think, I think. But if I, I'll make sure to put all of the correct information down below because again, I don't have any of my notes. I would think that since I've been working on it for a while, I would remember, but no, I don't. <laughs> Pretty sure it's a 30 count, all DMC thread, and it's on a piece of linen that I tea coffee dyed. I didn't change anything either. It was all that called for. Um, I have also been working on Queen of Freedom by Maravilla. Um, I started this one in February of last year. I worked on her for a little while, picked her up again during Stitch Mania, and then she has been put away since the end of Stitch Mania. And when I finished Glitter Village, or no, when I finished Sally Spencer, I pulled her out and began working on her. She is my weekend stitch, and I will work on her until she's finished. I am stitching her on a piece of 32 count vintage Sahara with all of the called for DMC and Mill Hill beads. Right now I'm just um, focusing on the stitching and then I will go back in to all the back stitching and the beading at the same time. And so I think when I showed her in my last video, I was I don't, I don't, I'm pretty positive I had started working back on her. So I think I was like up in here somewhere. And then I, I've gotten all the way down here. I think this is the edge of her dress. And then right in here, it starts the bottom of her dress. So I'm, I think she's looking amazing. I love her, love her so much. I apologize that she, I've had her in my scroll frame. So she's a little bit rolled up. Um, my ironing board. And all of that is still put away, so there was no there was no time to you know give any of these a fresh press, so they are all, are all wrinkly. So those are my two, um, those are the two that I'm working on right now. I'm going to continue working on them until next until Monday, and then I'm hoping that I will have Thanksgiving comes again, and I will show you what I'm going to work on. Um, when it is finished, it's in my walking basket of whips. Um, so these two I will continue to work on until the new year. And then I will have a couple new starts and I will still be, I will still continue to work on um, Queen of Freedom until she's done. So, but I will show the, I will show you those very soon. Hold on. Um, and then, so I had two finishes. Um, and let's see, when I showed Santa Sampler by Country Cottage Needlework. So here he is, a little close up of him. So this was the Santa that I had. I'd had him for many years. He was looking very sad and I didn't have the heart to throw him away. So I gave him new life 
and I went ahead and I mounted my piece on two. So I mounted Santa Sampler on a piece of mat board. There's a piece of batting underneath. And then I attached him to two pieces of mat board that um, I covered with fabric from my stash. I stitched him, I stitched um, the sampler with all the called for DMC threads. And then just kind of out of my greenery stash, I went and just kind of priscilla him up. And he is attached. He is, um, I went ahead and I, he, he doesn't come off of here and hope, or the sampler is not going to come off of here. That's what I meant to say. So I love how it turned out. It turned out better than I expected. Um, I got a little bit worried because the Santa himself is not centered on the base. And so I went and I centered it on this. I think originally I had centered it on the base and it looked a little funny. So I had to pop it off and then move it over. And, but I think it turned out really, really good. And I like it. So, oh, here, let me show you his top. Camera's cutting him off. That's what he looks like. Uh, I stitched him on a piece of 32 count vintage country Lugana. Yes, Lugana. All the called for DMC threads. All the things. <laughs> Sorry. Like I said, this video has no notes, so I'm just totally flying blind. And I feel like it wraps up, you know, cause this is my first year on Floss Tube, and it just sort of wraps up the year. I started off the year kind of fumbling my way and then I sort of kind of got into a groove and I'm ending the year sort of fumbling my way through. And then next year, as I start my, my, first, my first video, I'm gonna really have to, you know, buckle down and be more professional, <laughs> if that's even possible. So as soon as uh, the Santa sampler was done, I started on hands-on design, Christmas Eve, it's part of the Merry Christmas series. I decided to, I liked the way that Priscilla did hers with the red church. So I did copy the church. Um, I think this, so the front part of the church is classic color works, licorice red, and then back here where it sort of changes color that is Tennessee red clay uh, and then I had some holly jolly in my stash which is the called for this uh, tree right here is DMC the yellow is DMC um, I think the chimney was hickory sticks and then um, all of the snow the roof and all that was bamboo um, I stitched this on a piece of 32 count mystery linen and I went ahead and kind of gave it a little bit of a Priscilla finish I used the template from Hands On Design. If you go to her website, she has tutorials, and under the tutorials, she has the, the different templates and things to um, finish the ornaments. I think originally the way you were supposed to do it was you were supposed to cut two pieces that were the same size as what the church is mounted on. And when I did it, the piece so I have it because I wanted to finish it just like she did. But when I went to go attach the back of it, the back was, was bigger. And I, at that point, I just decided to go ahead and cut some mat board that's in the set, that kind of looks like a gift tag. And so that's the route that I went. So, and I used a rusty bell out of my stash and I wrapped my own cord. So I think it turned out pretty darn good for my second ornament ever. And I kind of want to get, I have, um, I have one other ornament out of that same series. And I think I, at some point I want to collect the rest of them because it'd be kind of fun to have it on the tree. And it looks really good hanging on the tree. These were the colors that I used. So I have Tennessee red clay, licorice red, and then holly jolly, hickory sticks, bamboo. And then the two DMC I used was 3821 and 3362. I think it turned out pretty good. I like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pause the video right now and then I am going to organize my whips a little bit. So hold please. So I know that I have referred to my mocking basket of whips a lot in my videos. And I thought I would show you what the basket looks like. This is what the basket looks like. So they're all of my whips and the mocking basket. Because honestly, every time I walk past it, pretty sure I hear it mocking me because there's so much in here. So the way that I classify my whips, 
there are so the, the way that I okay so the way that I look at my whips that so imagine like whips like a banner with whip written on it and underneath the banner are things that I have started so it actually has stitching in it and then there are stuff that I have I've begun kitting up and so once I start kitting something up to me it becomes a whip because that means I had the intention to stitch it at any point in time of course I can pull it out if you know if I decide you know I, I really don't want to I'm gonna take the threads and, and put it into another whip and I'm gonna put the pattern back into the basket that I have for just my my cross stitch patterns so at the beginning of 2019 I started off with three whips Let's talk about those. The first whip that I started off with was Halloween at Hawkland Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. Right? Yep. Carriage House Samplings. This way. Um, I'm stitching this with the called for or the recommended DMC. And I just have to check the year here. Does it say, I think this came out in 2017. I think it does, I think it did. And I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but this is how far I got on it. So when I started it, I think it came out in September and I worked on this block and then I set it aside. And then that following March, I worked on this. So it must've been like 2018. So I started this 2017, 2018, I think and I have not picked it up since. And that is where I have gotten so far. So in 2019, that was my whip. I also, in the spring of 2017, I started um, Simply Meant to Be Story Keep Heaven and Earth Designs. And the artist is Sherry Gearhart. So there it is there. And this is the progress that I made. I did pick it up again and I worked on it very briefly. I think I worked on it briefly in 2018. And again, I remember working on it in the spring and it might've been in Stitch Mania. I think I picked it up again. What I have since learned is that I should not have bought 18 count Ada, which is what it is on. I should have bought the Lugana and I should have stitched it one over one. I did not know that's the way you were supposed to stitch them. I don't like the 18 count Ada. It is very stiff. It's very hard to work with, but I don't know if I want to restart it at this point or just keep going. Um, but now I know I know all the things that I did wrong. I should have kitted it up by itself. I didn't realize how confetti heavy it was. And so I'm keeping it as a whip. I kind of want to keep going on it, but at the same time, I'm tempted to restart it. So I need to figure that one out before I go any further. And then the third whip that I had at the beginning of 2019 was Autumn at Hawthorne Hollow. I started this in August of 2017, I'm pretty sure. It could have been 2018, but I didn't keep track of anything and I don't have any way. Whatever year that Halloween at Hawthorne Hollow came out, I started this the August before I started that. And so this is my progress so far. I have not picked this up since. I originally started it back then and I really do like them and I so my goal is oh and I stitched this on a piece of 32 count no 40 count oh I'm you know what I think I said 32 count on Halloween both Halloween and autumn are on 40 count vintage country Lugana I'm stitching it with the called for a recommended DMC threads and my plan is that when I have finished Queen of Freedom, this one is going to take her place when she's done. And I will work on that until it is finished. It's gonna take me a little bit longer, but I'm okay with it. I, I love the Hawk Run Hollow series, and I would love to be able to stitch Christmas, farms, the map, houses. I love them all, and I, I really hope that 
once I finish these two, see, I have to finish these two first before I can buy a new one. So I'm going to finish them. And then I think I'm going to get um, the farms of Hawker and Hollow next, but I haven't completely decided, but I love them. I love all of them. I've seen them finished. I've seen them finished in person and they are stunning. I love them. So at the beginning of 2019, those were the three whips that I have, that I had. And then, of course, Stitch Mania rolled around this past year, and I added some more to my whips, and I had some previous whips that I had started after I started doing um, Floss Tube. And so everything I just need to get back to and get to stitching. So the next whip that is in the basket is Oh Joyce Day by Blackbird Designs. I started this during Stitch Mania. And this is my meager start. Um, I'm not really loving the linen, and I think I might actually give this a dip in some tea coffee and then bake it and kind of molt it up a little bit. And I can't. And I'm using DMC, so DMC won't run. And it, I've done it before, where after I've stitched a little ways, I've just dipped it and then baked it, and the DMC holds up very well. Um, I am not a hundred percent sure what it is that I'm stitching this on. I'm pretty positive that it is a it looks like a 32 count but I will make sure that I put the correct information about it down below the next whip is uh, the Scarlet House American Farmhouse I also started this one during Stitch Mania this past year I'm stitching it with all of the called for thread and I am stitching it on a piece of 36 count picture this plus ale. And that is all the farther I got on it. So of course this is one of the ones that I will be getting back to and finishing this next year. Um, and then hang on a second. I have, I have them all kind of mixed up together. Oh. No. Is that all of them? No. Yes. Hang on a second. So what I what I've been doing this past year is I have been slowly kidding up. I can't believe that's it. That's a lot better than I thought. And I meant to count it before I came on to do my video and I thought I had like a ridiculous amount of whips that and the whips that I had started stitching, but that's not too bad. That's very doable. So this past year, I have been slowly kidding up things and I've kind of been um, not, not, not necessarily ramping it up, but over the fall, I kind of, I did purchase a couple of charts, but then I started going through my charts and really seeing what I have to stitch. And there's a lot of things in there that I really, really want to stitch. And maybe to go back a little bit. So in October, I was out cleaning my dungeon. And when I was going through my quilting supplies, I discovered a bunch of quilts that were in various stages of completion. There were some that all it needs is sashing, um, some that I've got about half the blocks done, and then a few that they are, uh, maybe I started, it was like a, I would start the one block and then I have all of the fabric already cut. And I realized I need to get some of these finished. And it really bothered me that I had all of these quilts that I had started and I hadn't gotten back to for whatever reason they had gotten put away and I forgot about them. Plus I have a stack of quilt tops that are ready to be quilted. And it really didn't sit well with me that I had all of this that I need to get done. So after I took a really good look at the quilting, I decided to take a good look at my cross stitch. And so I pulled out all of these charts that I had bought and I sort of refreshed my memory on why I bought them and, you know, I love them. And I'm like, why am I spending money to buy all these new charts when I have all this great stuff in my stash? So over the fall, I have been meticulously adding to, I've been, um, I will pull a chart that I know that I want to stitch on and I have been matching it with linen and buying threads if it needs it or buying linen if it needs it. And then I will put them in the 
the basket because that means that I had the intent to stitch and I need to stitch them. And so this next year, my goal is to really focus on finishing, starting and finishing the things that are already in my stash instead of buying new stuff, especially since I am wanting to redo my bedroom and I've started taking banjo lessons and I like the income is sh like my disposable income has shrunk a lot. And so what I've decided to do is this next year, the only thing I'm really going to focus on buying is threads and linen. And I'm going to do my best to stitch from stash. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, a couple months down the row, I might not pick up a chart that I really, really like, but I'm going to try my, my hardest to really focus on stitching only from my stash and only buying the things for those charts when it comes time for me to stitch them. So all of these I have been working on kitting up over the fall, over the summer and over the fall. And so it's my plans for what I wanna stitch in 2020. So the, my hope is that uh, when the new year rolls around and I have my open rotate in my open, in my rotation, I have an open spot after Thanksgiving comes again is done as I will be working on Baby It's Cold Outside by Heartstring Samplery. Um, I'm planning on doing it on a piece of 36 count Patriots Brew Linen that I picked up from 123 Stitch when it was only $4 because there was a bunch of them on sale and so I was able to grab a couple. I will be stitching it on the called for thread and the one, so the two that I had in my stash are Shaker White and Pomegranate. And then in Anniversaries of the Heart, I'm going to pull the rest of the called for out of there because the chart itself only needs like five colors. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and they're in Anniversaries of the Heart. So I will, and I don't need them right now. So I am going to head, I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out of there and use them in this one and then replenish them uh, when they run low and put it in with Anniversaries of the Heart. So that is whip number one for 2020. Then for Christmas, so last Christmas in the, in the box of awesomeness, I received a Marabilia Halloween Fairy kit. So it comes with everything that I need to start. And so this next year, my hope is to begin stitching her. And I don't know that I'm actually gonna be able to stitch all of these, but it'll just carry over to the next year. That one is, I don't know why that one's in there. Um, and then I was gifted all of Little House Needleworks Early American series this past fall. And it has the, it has a piece of linen in it. I'm actually gonna pull this linen out, tea, coffee, dye it, and then I will stitch it with DMC thread from my stash. And I think that's a 32 count. Then of course, I've been talking about this for a really long time, and that is the Anniversaries of the Heart series. Um, this is Stitch Along that I'm co-hosting with Deborah Canopy Stitches on Instagram. And Deborah, I'm sorry I have not called you back yet. I've been crazy busy, but I will try to get in touch with you next week. Um, I So her and I are um, hosting a Stitch Along that I've been talking about for many, many months. Um, I am doing the whole entire series on one piece of linen which that is a 35 count um, sand. I'm doing it with some of the called for and some of DMC that I will be pulling out of my stash and some fancy floss that I will be pulling out of my stash that kind of matches the color that I need. I will be starting with Snow Garden and that stitch along kicks off on January 1st. So I hope you will join us. The hashtag is BB Anniversaries 2020. I know a lot of you guys are planning on joining us and I'm really, really excited that you are and I will put all the information down below on that as well. Um, next up is, and some of these I'll take out and some of them I won't. Cause I know I'm kind of running out of time. My husband's probably gonna be home any minute. Um, this is the Blue Flower Night Walk Down. Um, I picked this one up not too long after it came out and I love it. Um, I had, I already had some of the called for from my stash. The rest of it, I will have to do some DMC, kind of create my own um, color palette for it. And I'm gonna be stitching on 40 Count Truffle Newcastle by Picture This Plus. It's 
it's kind of it's coming up right now it's kind of a lavender but it's actually pink and so my plan is to also start that one in the coming new year at some point I gotta make sure all these are sealed up so all of the, the threads don't fall out and get scattered everywhere and then I don't know what anything goes with anything and I'm sorry for the crinkling um, this one I received, I showed it in my last video. I bought it from Kathy Barrick. This is Sunflower Farm. She just uh, released this one a couple weeks back, maybe a month ago. And this was a um, originally a club piece. And I love it. And as soon as it came out, I had to buy it. I, I already told myself I was going to buy it when it came out. And I saw that it had and I picked it up. I am going to be stitching this one on a piece of 36 count cream brulee from r and R, I think. And I am going to stitch this one with the called for. I only had three in my stash. That was tin bucket, walnut, and nutmeg. They were in my stash already. The rest of them I have sitting in my shopping cart on one, two, three stitch. And as soon as payday rolls around, I will pick those up. Next up is Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. I have had this one for over a year and I really, really want to stitch this one. Originally my plan had been to stitch this one, but then I ended up working on Skeleton Crew. There's that one. I am going to stitch this on a piece of 35 Count Weeks Dye Work Cappuccino. And I am going to use all of the called for colors. I already have some of them. Um, and then some that I will be picking up um, later on this coming new year. So these are the colors I have right now. Very Halloween-y, very wonderful. Sorry for the crinkling again. There's no help for it. We're almost done. Next up, this was supposed to be a Stitch Mania star and it, it didn't happen. Um, this is Chessie and me, friends of Friends of the Mill Sampler. And I'm going to be stitching this on a piece of 32 count mystery linen that I had in my stash. And I think that I am going to be what am I going to be doing? I think I'm going to, I think the plan is to use the called for sampler threads and mix up some of the DMC in there as well. And the only two that I have is Cinnabar and Onyx. And I think that's the house color Cinnabar is. And the next one is which this one is fully kitted and ready to go, and that is Olga Stocking by Plum Street. I am going to stitch it on a piece of 32 count vintage Sahara. Is it a Belfast linen? And I'm using all of the called for threads. And so I have been kitting this one up for, since I picked up the pattern. And I know I picked it up sometime this past year, in the spring maybe. So there's all the called for, and I will be starting the, um, this is one of the ones that I know I'm going to work on this coming year because I do want it. I do want it finished and on display for next year. And then the next one, and I'm not going to, not going to take it out of its kit. This is Blackbird Designs, First Winds of Autumn. So it is also another one that is fully kitted and ready to go. Um, I cannot remember what the, looks like it might be a 36 count. And I, I think I'm going to finish it and frame it instead of put it as a strawberry, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. So that's another one that's fully kitted and ready to go. And then last is, I got this from, from Mother's Day, um, this past year. This is Lila Studio The Bee Comes. And I think this was a market release this past year. 
I'm going to be stitching it on a piece of R and R antique cotton. And let me fetch all of the threads and all of the DMC that's called for. So that's not too shabby. Um, I thought that my whip pile was gonna be a lot worse than it was, but I have been trying my best to, you know, work on it. I think that I've managed to finish three whips um, out of my previous starts, and so that's pretty good. And so my plan is to um, continue working on my whips to get those finished and then work on the ones that I have already begun kitting. There will be some smalls that I will throw in. There's some other um, charts that I haven't begun kitting up yet that I know that I, I do want to stitch. I have a lot of um, 4th of July ones that I know that I want to get um, working on. And so I will begin kitting those up as well. I know that there's no way that I'm going to be able to finish all of these in a year because a lot of them are pretty large. Um, my goal with the anniversaries of the heart is to work on this for two weeks and rotate with my husband's stocking. And so in every other video, you'll see progress on this. And in every other video, you'll see progress on his stocking. And so that's kind of, that's my plan right now, because that way it leaves the one spot completely open for me to work on some of these other ones. So kind of seems like a pretty big ticket to fill, but I am... I'm determined. I really do want to try my best to just stick to what I absolutely need for the things that I want to stitch because I have a lot of great charts in my stash that I absolutely love and I would love to have around my home. And so I'm going to do my best to, I got a lot of stitching here, so I'm going to try my best to really focus on, on, on the pile here. And, and I, you know, I've got some great marabilias that I want to work on. The one that I threw aside that I did not show um, and that's because I had um, a fabric pulled for it and then I took it out because I didn't like it and I decided to get a different fabric for that and that is The Forest Goddess by Marabilia. I've decided to go with a 32 count murky and I haven't picked up the linen yet. I will um, down the road. But I know that at some point I will begin kitting her up but there's, there's no way that she'll be in my stitching rotation this next year. So that about brings me to the end. I did have a giveaway in my last video. This video, I won't have a giveaway. Um, and that is because in my next video, that is my Flossiversary and I have plans. Um, I have three things I'm gonna be giving away. It's gonna be a chart and a project bag that will go together. And so I figured that's a, I need to work on that. That's a, a pretty awesome, well, I shouldn't say it's a pretty awesome giveaway. You might not think it's a pretty awesome giveaway, but I figure this video, um, I won't have a giveaway uh, because I do need to focus on that giveaway. I need to make the project bags and, and get all of that ready. And so um, this one, sorry, there won't be a giveaway, but I do have last, the video, the giveaway from my last video, I have the winners for the, uh, before I announced those winners though, um, in my previous video, I had, I, be, I had four winners. So I had the that video's two winners, the video before that's winner, and then I re-pulled from a past video. Um, I have not got those out in the mail yet. They are all um, uh, bundled up and ready to go. I just need to take them to the post office. And I apologize that I, ha I just have not had any time to go to the post office. Um, my goal is maybe this afternoon. They'll either go out this afternoon or Monday and they'll be on their way to you. And I, again, I apologize um, for not getting those to you guys sooner. It had not been my intention to keep them so long. So, you know, please bear with me. Um, things have just been very busy. Um, so in my last video, I had two giveaways. So two charts that I was giving away. One of them was um, Skeleton Crew by the Cricut Collection and Santa Sampler by Country Cottage Needleworks. Uh, the winner for Skeleton Crew is Geraldine Ward Farron. So Geraldine, congratulations. If you could get a hold to me via email, pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com and send me your address, I promise I will get this out in the mail to you next week. Congratulations. The second winner is Lois Mitchell for the Santa Sampler by Country Cottage Needle 
needlework. So Lois, if you could get a hold of me via email, pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com, I will get this out and mail to you next week. Promise. So that about wraps it up. If you guys have stayed tuned through the whole entire video, I really appreciate it because I know this one was a little bit all over the place. Um, in my mind, it was supposed to go a little bit better than it actually did. But I think, you know, the last two weeks have went by so fast that I still have not really caught up with anything. And I was thinking I still had like another week before I needed to do my video. And then I, you know, I realized the other day that I have to do it, you know, my video was supposed to be done today. And, um, yeah, it's probably not my best work, but yeah, it's just been, life's been a little crazy. So anyway. Um, I will be back in two weeks. It will be my flossiversary, and I'm very excited about that. I can't believe that I've been on floss tube for a year now, let alone that I even put out a video. I think if somebody would have told me a year ago that I'd be doing videos now, I would have thought they were crazy because there's that's just nothing I ever even thought I would do other than in my imagination. But yeah, so I will have some giveaways in my next video. I apologize that I don't have any for this video. There just wasn't enough time to, you know, try to find something that was cool to cool enough to give away. So anyway, in my next video, I will have a couple to give away for the Flossiversary. Um, I do want to thank you all for, you know, subscribing to my channel, for coming back every two weeks to see what I am up to. So anyway, guys, I will go ahead and leave you now. I have to go get lunch for the kiddos because it's now one o'clock. So I hope you have a great couple of weeks. I hope you get lots of stitching done. I wish you a very happy new year and um, I will see you in, I'll see you two weeks. Bye guys.